investigation, the athletes of Bahrain. Peaceful protests turned deadly. Superstar athletes in prison and torture. And the U.S.'s relationship with a key ally in question. This is wrong. This is the time for the United States to stand up and take a stand. It's October 1st in the tiny Persian Gulf nation of Bahrain. The national soccer team trains for its next World Cup qualifying match. The nation's international soccer success has been due largely to the efforts of one man, Allah Hubel country's all-time leading scorer, its greatest ever athlete. Led by Hubel, Bahrain narrowly missed the last two World Cups. But tonight, he's not here with the team. Peter Taylor, an Englishman, has been Bahrain's national coach since July. How important would he be to this team's success? I don't know. I haven't seen him play. Ever? I've never seen him play. What have you been told about his abilities? Nothing. What interest do you have in him? At the moment, I don't know who you're talking about. Taylor doesn't know anything about Hubail because Hubail's effectively banished from the kingdom. Along with three other members of the national soccer team, including his brother Mohammed, Allah Hubail can no longer play for his country. Hubel's ordeal began in February 2011 as the pro-democracy movement known as the Arab Spring swept across the Arab world. Hubel and his brother joined tens of thousands of their fellow Bahrainis demanding greater freedom. The vast majority of those protesting, including the Hubails, were Shiite Muslims, who make up 70% of Bahrain's population of fewer than a million. They were fed up with the all-powerful royal family, the Al Khalifas, who are Sunni Muslims and who treat the Shia majority like an underclass, limiting access to jobs and resources. At an athlete's rally, Allah Hubail was among the speakers. We begin with breaking news from the Middle East. Army forces in Bahrain now say they have locked down the capital city. The royal family's response to the demonstrators was swift and brutal. We were still peacefully asleep. Most of the people were sleeping at this time. In that initial assault by security forces, four people were killed, hundreds more, including athletes, injured. <laughs> Bahrain was in chaos. We are all ready to go. It's either we get freedom or we go. We want our rights. We want. By early April, the government had taken a new approach, making examples of athletes. One of the king's sons, who is president of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, was put in charge of the effort to detain and punish prominent athletes. On state-run television, they were identified and denounced as traitors and spies, including soccer star Allah Hubail. 
30 40 الف متفرج في استاد البحرين الوطني يحتفلون باسمه نسيتوا في لحظه دي the next day, state security police arrived at the national soccer team's training grounds. I saw people who were coming from the United States. Yes, of course. They came to me and said, of course, and 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 of course. We came to a place that was not known, and we were able to talk to them. What message was the government sending? by arresting Bala Hubel and his brother in Bahrain. Be quiet, shut up, or else. Two days later, security forces also descended on the Bahrain International Circuit, home to the country's annual Formula One Grand Prix, its most important international sporting event. 27 track employees were arrested. All were Shiites. <laughs> In total, nearly 200 sports figures were imprisoned without hearings. أنا كده يعني عقب ما خلونا في الغرفة ناس ما قلت ليش وضربونا وهاي أنا اللي من ضمن الشخص اللي كان يضربني قاعد يقول إني راح أكسر رجولك وشاتني على رجولي نفسها هم كده يعرفونا. طبعا كان في غرفة خاصة للتعديل كانوا بيجيبوا ال. كيبل الكهرباء وكانوا بيصمدون الشخص وبيبطحوا على الارض في ايدي طبعا انا كنت معصوب العينين وما كنت اشاهد شو اللي قاعد يصير حط في يدي سلك وقال لي الحين راح اشغل عليك الكهرباء I saw three girls those girls they work for Formula 1 F1 I saw lots of blood and bruises and raw flesh Doctors, like Nada Daif, were imprisoned and tortured like the athletes. Their crime? Giving medical care to protesters. You can imagine the shock where I was beaten, and in between, I hear the Adan, the Allahu Akbar, saying in the background. <laughs> they would stop. They would go pray and come back to finish the torture. يعني شو أقول لك عايشين في وقت في مثل الحلم خيالي من الخوف والرعب اللي كان متواجد أكيد غصبا علينا أول شيء نستحملها يعني لا بد إن نستحملها يعني لو يمكن ما استحملت يمكن يصدني شيء أكثر من هاي الشيء أو مضاعفات يعني after being held for nearly three months, most of the imprisoned sports figures were released by the Al-Khalifa regime. But not before many were forced to sign confessions and face secret military trials. Allah's brother Muhammad was sentenced to two years in prison, but he's free while he appeals. Allah's court case is scheduled for mid-November. E60 requested interviews with high-ranking Bahraini officials regarding the imprisonment and torture of athletes including a member of the royal family, who is vice president of the Bahrain Olympic Committee. The committee's president led the campaign against athletes. Security forces here killed about three dozen citizens during the course of these demonstrations. You have to defend yourself, you have to protect the law, and you have to take decisions on the ground. You viewed the response as proportional and justified? Absolutely. What do you know about what happened to these athletes when they were detained? When they were detained, nothing. There are substantial claims of torture. From, we heard many stories, but how can we say that for fact this happened? We also met with Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa, CEO of the Bahrain International Circuit, whose 27 Shia employees were arrested and to this day don't have jobs. He too is a member of the royal family. Many of them say they were tortured in prison. What do you know about their situations, parents? I don't know. We're waiting for You're the boss. Yeah, but that's not something that we have uh, in our influence. Anyway. You, you don't get to decide who works here? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. So uh, these people are not working here now. They don't even know the charges against them. I don't either. Bahrain is a long-standing partner, and we are committed to its security. 
The Obama administration's response to the situation in Bahrain has been muted, unlike its response to the anti-government uprisings in Tunisia, Egypt, Libya, and Syria. Bahrain is home to the U.S. Navy's 5th Fleet and is a cherished ally. In fact, in October, leaked U.S. Defense Department documents showed that the administration was finalizing plans to deliver $53 million worth of weapons and military training to Bahrain, despite widespread reports of human rights abuses. If the United States doesn't take a strong stand in holding off on arms sales to governments that torture their own people, I think the United States will lose credibility. Six hundred miles from Bahrain, on the easternmost edge of the Arabian Peninsula, Ola Hubel, now 34, lives in the Sultanate of Oman. His wife and children still in Bahrain. His career, he's made millions and scored crucial goals with millions watching. But now he's on a team that's paying him $10,000 for the season and playing for just a couple of hundred fans. Do you think you will ever play again for the national team? What is your message to the United States about its strong support of the Bahraini government? ليش يعني بالذات إن البحرين هم اللي مثلاً تخليتون عنهم هم الوحيدين مثلاً اللي ما حد ساندهم ولا علام إليهم مثلاً من دول.